Hey everyone, it's Stormer here and welcome back to From the Depths with Philip. So today we have a ton of different ships to showcase for you. We have been busy building all these different ships. So Philip has a air vehicle, another air vehicle, I have a cargo ship, we built a sub, some other things. Uh, Big effing gun over here. <laughs> At the end of the episode, I have a challenge for you guys. But I also want to say that the episodes where just showing off what we've done, this is probably going to be one of the very last ones. After this, we are going to start moving more into challenges and other types of videos in From the Depths, not as much of showing off what we have been building. But this episode is going to be very exciting because We've been experimenting with completely different types of ships. This is my first sub I ever made. It's based off of the Atlas sub that someone made for the game Subnautica. Now it doesn't have the third floor, but design wise, it looks very much like it. And super awesome design. The creator did an awesome job overall. And hey, guess what? Just decided to make it in from the depths. This version is, the original attempt at it and it is a very nice interior so we're just gonna skim through it so oh oh, oh oh my gosh it's all tipping around let's uh just pick it up out of the water so this room this is where you'd put like a sea moth and a prawn suit but we have tractor beams and sub vehicle spawners or just vehicle spawners so you can actually spawn in vehicles outside the ship so it kind of works like that then you have uh, material storage, and then back here is steam engine, and then you can go down here. It doesn't want to go down, so I'm just going to break a block. We go down here, we're in here, and then we're underneath all this, and there's all the repair units to make all the things. Then there's that, and then you are in the front of the ship, and I love this cockpit area, this whatever this control area is. I love the floating bridge and all the glass around it. It's so cool. Transition blocks for the win everywhere. So that was the original thing. Um, you have ion thrusters there, uh, propeller rudders, um, just look super cool. Sonar, just, it's such an awesome chip. And in from the depths, it turned out pretty dang well. But light alloy does not work as a sub. So we had to convert the entire thing to metal and put lead in the ship. So there's a bunch of lead where you can't see it on the inside of the ship. And so in here, it's kind of just same thing around here. Now, this room now has torpedoes. And what else changed? This room has RTGs to make energy for the shields at the front of the ship, which I'll show you. But up here in the tower, there's a sonar. And then I put a wireless camera. There's a wireless camera there and there and there, which you can actually access and view through in the front. I'll show you that in a second. But up here, we have the AI and some PIDs and ACB and ammo storage. And there's ion thrusters around the ship, just a couple of them in a few places to make the ship actually be stable underwater because making a sub is very complicated. Tons of PIDs and programming and thinking and such. So the torpedoes, if you're curious, the front two are EMP, the back two are sonar decoys. Also here, you jump out here, you reach the control terminal, and then you can look at, uh, 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 okay, glitch and cameras, cool. So you have cameras there. The front of the ship has shield projectors. There's one down there, one up there, and then the other ones you saw. And those put shields all around the front glass area. Now they're controlled by an ACB, so when an enemy is detected within a few thousand meters or something, then the shields turn on. It would be cool to have shields around the entire sub, but that's just not gonna happen. On the outside, the front shield area, it looks kind of stupid, but from the inside, it looks awesome. You just have shields all around you. So it's just shields to protect the glass. That's about it with the sub. Now, Philip did make a version of the sub too. He helped a lot on it with the PIDs and understanding all that stuff. The tail is gone. 
uh, because drag it and the rudders make the ship roll over. So on the metal one that you saw a second ago, uh, the rudders have been replaced with just metal wedges. And this one, it just doesn't have them whatsoever. They have the ion thrusters. There's sonar buoys on the top of this one. And then in here, there's these torpedo launchers that extend out of the side of the sub right here with pistons and then shoot torpedoes off. Now these torpedoes, they do a lot more damage. They are fully explosive. So this one has that going for it and less drag and all that stuff. This is a cargo ship here. It's just based off of normal cargo ship. I based it off of the ones up in Astoria because in Astoria, you see these cargo ships all over the place. It looked a lot more like it if it painted it, just uh, black and red and the white tower up there, but it works pretty dang well. Has the nice anchor with the chain in front and put a gun on it for good measure because this is from the depths you need to protect your cargo somehow bunch of material on top uh one propeller in the back there's the coincidence rangefinder that's spinning around i think that's kind of cool just this fake steam piping area there's a little bit of detection around the thing you can be up here control all the stuff and nothing in here nothing in some of it uh AI is way in the back and steam engine, just medium steam engine. And then each of these compartments, this one has a steam engine. This one has fuel. This one has batteries and a couple RTGs. This one has ammo and a few ammo makers. And then the front one actually has nothing in it because there's no other types of material. If you needed more than 1.6 material, you could put more cargo containers in here and they'd be pretty protected. But the look of this just looks pretty cool. It's a cargo ship, just takes cargo from point A to point B. That's all it's supposed to do. And this inside hull design, we actually did test it at one point that even though it's only one thick metal, because the compartments have metal around them too, that if the side gets shot out, it will only go through the side. It won't actually go to all the stuff in here. It costs under 100,000 material. If you took out all the resource storage on this thing, it cost less than 50,000. I think why the front end doesn't pop up and want to fly to space, even though this thing is a little bit lower than the center of mass, is because the thing is so long. So there's, it essentially makes it have enough weight in the front to just keep it down. 25 meters a second, pretty dang good. Here's the vulture that Philip made. He based it off of one of the already existing helicopter hovercraft plane thingies. Yeah, the Snow Predator's Hydra. Then kind of converted it to a slightly Halo-esque vehicle. Yeah, or Avatar-esque. Yeah, it. I think it looks a lot more like Avatar in the end. But, yeah. dude, this cockpit, though, that is beautiful. Oh, that glass so nice. transition blocks, man. It's so cool. Oh, yeah. So are you putting a second gun on the bottom? Is that what? Or a third gun? Yeah. Um, I think I might have updated it since you last looked at it. But I took yeah, the large, probably. the medium, tor the missiles off the sides and put small missiles in with a... Uh, missile interceptors so oh okay cool 30 to 40 meters a second in a straight line that's pretty good um it's got a shield at 10 strength on the front covering it from below mm. well philip's gonna make some changes to it but this thing it looks really cool and as you can see it does work yeah. it functions now in combat does it work well not really <laughs> put it routinely up against basically it's same the original variant of this and what keeps happening it would destroy the whole missile system and then the next shots would destroy the daddy blade and it would just fall out of the sky there. against ships like yeah missiles do damage if they end up hitting guns they're fine whatever so combat wise eh it, yeah. whatever but you know it's concept the crazy thing is how compact this ship is and oh, that's yeah. kind of the thing with building 
war aircraft in this game is that you don't have much space to make anything great and so you have to optimize every square inch of yeah. the plane this little ship down here we were testing out drills which we'll talk about drills in a second we ended up testing the steam jets because there's steam jets now who knew that those existed they are a new type of propulsion you don't need a propeller or an engine with a steam engine to propel yep. a craft anymore you could just do steam jets now to put it in perspective a steam jet it has 2000 force when a five meter propeller has 54,000 force so these you would not want to use on a giant craft but on a small ship they are perfect because one they can work both underwater and above water. And two, you don't have to have an engine or a propeller, so you can cram just a little steam boiler in a small ship and go dang fast. Show them how fast this thing goes. This thing is insane. Look at that. Over 50 meters per second. It goes faster that is when it's turning. It's insane. really weird. Almost 60 meters per second in this tiny little boat with just a couple steam jets on it. I don't even think a propeller could get you going this fast. Oh no. In this little thing. Like you'd have to have a bigger steam engine on this thing, which probably wouldn't even fit in this little boat to go this fast. So steam jets, they're a thing, they're pretty cool. Now what Philip did with that, he took, uh, he took that thing and then tried a plane out of it, which yeah. it so, kind of just looks like a fat blob with little wings on it. It's kind of funny. It's a, sun, it's a sunfish. Oh, a sunfish? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's a lot of steam jets on it. Now, I don't know if this thing exactly works super great, but, you know, from the depths, it's all about testing. And, man, 90 meters per second, that is insane. Now... Hey, it does fly. Yeah, I uh, just don't AI know if it flies very well. The oh. AI doesn't fly it very well, but if you're controlling it yourself, it actually flies very nice. Holy cow! Is it the farther we go into space, the faster it goes? Yep. Holy cow! 150 meters per second. My goodness, haven't seen the compass of the world in a while. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of work on the prototype, so this is prototype two, so we're not going to show the other changes that we've done. We'll wait till probably after the competition to show all the changes we've made to first the tournament one and the main one. So there's a bunch of that to look forward to. Like, we have a bunch of different versions. So Philip made this BFG, which is just freaking insane it's a nine barrel the and it's a rail gun too type right now shoots slower than these do each barrel shoots faster or almost twice as fast as the one of the prototype does that's just insane fire again oh yeah there we go two shots big gun on the prototype is dead oh oh, oh you can there we go one shot Front gun down. Let's get the other one. And gone. yep, they're they're all done. It is going to be the main gun on what we're considering to be what the campaign considers the godly designs. Philip is designing a Godzilla footprint of a ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is. is going to be okay you in that spotted. ship. Sure, why not? Here it is. Is big enough that you could almost have those BFGs as secondary guns. So I'm gonna have <laughs> oh, geez. three to four of them lined up uh, front to back, just going higher and higher. That's insane. Um, like, how big is a prototype compared to that thing? A prototype is half the length of this thing. Yes. That's insane. And the last thing that I want to ask you guys about is this drill thing. First, it started out as this drill ball thing. So it's these simple drills. There's just a bunch of drill parts on the inside of here. Uh, it kind of looks like this on the inside, but more compact. And the point of this drill ball thing is 
to be able to be spawned from a ship and fly over to the enemy ship and drill into the ship and just rip it all apart from the inside out. Why we want to do that is because no one would even think about it. First, no one thought about it. Second, no one can defend against it. And third, even if someone could defend against it, who's going to even imagine of being attacked by one of these things? No one. So that's why we want this thing to work. We want to have this drill ball or something that can fly over and lodge itself in a ship and just rip an entire ship apart from the inside out. Now we have tested these things. They do tons of damage. The problem is, is they don't fly the best. They don't attack ships. They don't target ships and fly to them super great. Now that's not our only attempt at it. We made this one, which this kind of looks like an Aya Cthulhu or something from Terraria or a squid or something like that. Just the RTGs on the back as like tentacles and it has just the drill on the front. And it, that worked decent too. Philip changed it and made a sub version. So the drill is on the front and it's long. It's not a ball anymore. And it's supposed to go below water and then attack a ship from underneath and drill into it. Now this thing also, it kind of works. And you know, if it this thing- some AI problems. If this eyeball squid thing, it might accidentally run into something and destroy it. Yeah, like look at that. Just one tap from a drill and it destroys half a craft. That's how good these drills are. Like rams on spin blocks doesn't work super great. The drills, they do tons of damage. And now we've oh, yeah. only been running on these tests, uh, 300 speed, which is 30 armor piercing roughly and roughly 7,000 damage. You can go way bigger with them, but as soon as you add in a second drill, it steals a bunch of it. And then you need way more pieces in it. And when you're trying to be compact and as small as possible, that's pretty hard to do. Um, yeah. So two is probably the limit. Um, and the problem is, is if you go much bigger than this size of a ball, then the drills don't make contact with the ship. It's just this ball hitting the ship and it doesn't do any damage. Like if they had seven meter drill bits, that would help. These are only three meters. Like game, yeah. could you add in some five and seven meter drill bits? That would help a lot, but yeah. It so, would be nice to have like an actual drill where you go from small to big. Mm -hmm. Just go seven, five, three, one. Yeah, like making a a triangle, like if you're looking at from the side, have a triangle drill instead of just this weird circle drill. That'd be cool yeah. too. They kind of go toward ships and attack them and rip them up. Like once they get to the ship, they do tons of damage. They work great. So the, the idea works. The problem is, is the AI and the targeting and everything. That part, it doesn't work the best. And the, the drills like being this long of it with the sub thing, so many parts of it can get caught somewhere on the ship and the drill doesn't do any more damage. It just kind of gets lodged in a ship. So my challenge for those who are willing to take it is to create your version of this idea, this ball drill thing, whatever, that a ship can spawn in a drill thing that will fly over or maybe just go underwater. Oh yeah, holy cow, that drill just took out the other one. And go attack an enemy ship and rip it up from the inside out. And if you're gonna use code, Go ahead, whatever. I just want to see this thing work and maybe download it off a of Steam Workshop or something because that would be pretty freaking epic to have on our ships. That is it for our showcase today. We have been very busy and this is everything except all the bajillions of prototypes we've been working on. I have a couple other ideas for ships I want to build and Philip has some other ideas, like obviously Godzilla's foot over there. But uh, we are going to be getting into some challenges after this or soon after this. 
and doing some other things in the game. So if you like this one, share it with a friend, and if you want to see more like this, hit subscribe. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.